philosophy of how to develop a city. We were met there. We had arranged for him to meet us and do a lecture, which we thought would last about an hour. It lasted two hours. And after that, he said, oh, let me take you around and show you a few of the buildings in Istanbul. And he's about 30 years old. And he's spending the whole day with us. And because he's very close friends with the mayor, who's made a special report, has made everything in Montreal for us happen the way it has over the years, he also had a magic key that allowed us to enter all the buildings. So it was really like walking through a sort of Arctic extreme world as an extension of his own private house. Um, for which we were very grateful, and I think sort of at that point we said we would like to invite him at some point. We didn't really expect him to accept, but he was happy to come. So we were very, very happy to have him here. And uh, perhaps you read the text in the poster, but um, I got sent to some all sorts of information um, by this practice when we were sort of arranging how to introduce this talk. And I chose one snippet of it. Um, we just not seeing so there's a, there's a list of kind of a personal biography in which he says, I was born in 1932 in what is now the Architectural Academy of Mendrisia, in a building that at the time was a hospital of the Holy Virgin. Could this coincidence perhaps have led me later in life to choose the profession of architecture? He goes on to talk about his love for fishing and how he was brought up in a quite religious, quite strict household and then met a series of friends in the 60s and 70s who were quite left-wing and liberal-minded, and how that sort of changed his point of view about religion and about society and that up with his own approach to life. Um, he has a very strong belief that architecture should take a strong position and that it has a role in society and kind of a possibility to be politically engaged and to affect our lives in really interesting ways. And as Peter Dick has written in an introductory article for the book entitled An Article in Search of a Place, all the work in the field of architecture today know of Snotsi. Snotsi's designs are internationally known. He speaks to a student in pursuit of the essential, far from all forms of dramatic rhetoric. His language is clear, subtle, and critical. His operative method is a process which aims at transfiguring human existence. This means resistance, critique, challenge, polemic, struggle and concrete responses that take the form of designs with a clear foundation. Um, and in fact, in this sort of um, possibility to see him join us in on the crits a few days ago, um, he did surprise not only the students, but also the um, tutors in the way he sort of talked about the role of the schools. And it's one of the things that we talked about today, about how architecture schools have also had a role in forming, shaping the characters of future architects. Um, but without making make this introduction quite too long, it's going to be quite a long lecture because I'm going to be translating. It's not so to speak in the time. Um, and so it'll take a bit longer, but I'm sure it will be. Uh, I'll do my best. I'm sure I'll get stuck once in a while, but I'll do my best. I would like to say a thank you to David and Beck Kenyon from the Swiss Embassy, the cultural um, the department of the Swiss Embassy, who's been very kind to support this event. Uh, with some bottles of sparkling wine, but also some books and videos on Swiss architecture, which some of you can talk about towards in the exhibition. I'd like to thank all the, all the <coughs> students, and of course, Karen Juan and Kenneth Soderman, who came with us on the trip, and kind of making this part of our program this year. And um, to Robert Mull and everyone else here at the University who have agreed to have this event happen so late in the year. Um, and if I could now, I don't think really that Sonsi needs an introduction in terms of his, his long career, um, other than to say that he was, um, he's had a uh, practice since 1953, and he's been teaching at the same time all along in a series of um, universities, professor at Lausanne, until he was the age of retirement, after which he's continued to teach in the universities, including Trieste, and at the moment in Alghero in Sardinia, which he says, he does most because of his love of fishing, it's by the sea. I'd like to welcome Mr. Snotsi. <laughs> Some of you may know that um, the books, there's a collection of books that document his work over the past four or five decades, and there are several chapters in the all in red. Black letters, and this inspired um, poster. 
We thought in Jeopardy we have red chair as well. We find ourselves today living in a world whose very survival is gravely threatened. The symptoms are noticeable everywhere, and war remains a structural phenomenon within a society which pretends to be democratic. Penso che la comunità accademica ha la sua parte di responsabilità per quanto sta accadendo. I think that the academic community has to share of responsibility for what is happening. Essa ha quindi il compito di esaminare pubblicamente la vita umana sotto l'aspetto delle sue qualità morali e fino a che gli accademici non riusciranno a giungere ad una coscienza intellettuale sufficiente per formare dei cittadini responsabili e attivi in modo da portare termine al processo verso una democrazia sostanziale questo compito resterà l'obiettivo principale degli intellettuali e degli insegnanti. It therefore has the obligation. I'm sorry, I'll start with the I think the academic community has to share responsibility for what is happening. It therefore has the obligation to publicly examine human life from the point of view of its moral qualities until academics are able to raise an intellectual consciousness that suffices to form responsible and engaged citizens in order to complete the process towards a substantial democracy. This task will remain the main focus of the intelligentsia and the teachers. In questo senso, ritengo che la finalità dell'insegnamento dell'architettura non è tanto quello di formare degli architetti professionalmente capaci, ma quello di formare degli intellettuali critici dotati di una coscienza morale. In this sense, I believe that the purpose of architectural teaching, not so much, uh, I, said, I think the purpose of architectural teaching is not so much to produce professionally capable architects, 
but to produce critical intellectuals who have a sense of moral conscience. Con questa via introduzione, cercavo di sottolineare il fatto che l'architettura non è una disciplina neutrale rispetto alla società. With this introduction, I try to emphasize the fact that architecture is not a neutral discipline in relation to society. Alla base della mia riflessione e del mio operare, dunque, alla base del mio modo di insegnare e di progettare, c'è sempre un fondo politico e ideologico che si inserisce nella percezione socialista del mondo in opposizione ad una visione utilitaristica ed efficienza. At the root of my thinking and my work, thus the root also of my teaching and designing, there is always a political and ideological base which fits in the socialist conception of the world. In opposition to the utilitarian view and one of the efficiencies. Ma all'interno di questa prospettiva ideologica penso che l'architettura deve preservare la sua autonomia disciplinare. But within this ideological perspective, I think that architecture must retain its disciplinary autonomy. E penso che il solo modo di attribuire all'architettura un significato politico sta nel suo approfondimento specifico. I think the only way to attribute a political dimension to architecture lies in its specific development. È il solo modo con il quale l'architettura può avere un'influenza sui fatti strutturali della società. And the only way in which architecture can have an influence on the structural facts of society. Non sfuggire alle tue responsabilità. Occupati della forma. In essa ritroverai il ruolo. Uh, don't escape from your responsibilities. Work with the form. In it, you will find man. Se non attribuisco al progetto d'architettura un ruolo politico diretto, mi oppongo a qualsiasi tentativo di separare l'impegno disciplinare da quello politico. Ciò implica che anche le scuole d'architettura devono difendere la loro autonomia rispetto alle esigenze del professionalismo in modo da poter esercitare nella più grande libertà la loro funzione critica. If I do not attribute a direct political role to the architectural project, I stand against any attempt to separate the disciplinary effort from political commitment. This implies that schools of architecture must defend their autonomy from the demands of professionalism so that they can execute their critical function with greater freedom. Ho cercato di riassumere questa problematica per i miei studenti con il seguente schema. A sinistra si legge architettura, a destra società e politica. Sotto architettura, c'è scritto, l'architettura tende verso il permanente e non verso le fila. Mentre a destra la società politica tende verso l'effimero e non verso il permanente. Poi sotto architettura, l'architettura la, per sua natura è anti-efficiente, mentre società e politica ricercano la massima efficienza. So, um, he, as you say, he tried to summarize this issue for his students with the following scheme or diagram. Um, where he makes a comparison between architecture on the left side and society and politics on the left, on the right, sorry. Um, and beneath architecture, he writes, architecture tends towards the permanent and not towards the ephemeral. By its nature, it is inefficient. <clears throat> Whereas in relation to society and politics, it says that society and politics tends towards the ephemeral and not towards the permanent. And therefore, it requires the maximum efficiency. Se dovessimo tentare di elencare da una parte e dall'altra di questa tabella una serie di rinomati architetti attuali, vedremo che la maggior parte dei grandi nomi oggi più riconosciuti e quasi sempre richiesti per le grandi opere pubbliche sono organici e funzionali alla società attuale, il cui valore primo, se conosciamo, è consumo, mentre avremo una certa difficoltà per elencare architetti sotto architettura. If we were to list a series of currently renowned architects taken from here and there, we would see that most of the big names, those currently most recognizable, who are always, almost always required for large public works, are organic and functional in today's society, whose first value is consumerism, the consumer. 
we would find it more difficult to list architecture and building. From this simple scheme, assuming it is accurate, we can deduct that an architect can only be in a position of resistance to current society. Da questo semplice schema, ammessa la sua correttezza, si deduce che un architetto non può che trovarsi in una posizione di resistenza alla società prima. Mi dispiace, ma questo l'avevo già detto, sono andato un po' in altro. Ah, I went a bit ahead of myself, so I'll repeat. So from this simple scheme, assuming it is accurate, we can deduce that an architect can only be in a position of resistance to current society. E meglio dirlo due volte che Better to say it twice than once. Un altro tema centrale nella mia attività sta nel rapporto uomo-natura. Ho basato una parte del mio insegnamento su aforismi scritti nel 1973 per i miei studenti del Politecnico Federale di Zurigo, di cui ne citerò alcuni. Ma prima vi propongo due aforismi non miei. Il primo di Carlo Cattaneo, che è un grande... Eh, personaggio eh, milanese italiano che ha fatto molto per il nostro canton Ticino e il secondo dal mio amico premio Pritzker Paolo Mendes La Rossa che riassumono in modo chiarissimo quale può essere il rapporto tra architettura e natura. Another central theme in my work is the relationship between man and nature. I have based much of my teaching on aphorisms written in 1973 for my students of Polytechnic the Federal Protecting Concern. I will refer to some of these, but before I offer, before that, I offer two aphorisms, neither of which are mine. The first is from Carlo Cataneo, and the second from my friend, the Pritzker Prize winner, Paolo Mendes da Rocha, which summarize very clearly what the relationship between architecture and nature could be. Una regione si distingue dalle selvagge in questo, Ella è un immenso deposito di fatiche. Quella terra dunque non è opera della natura, è opera delle nostre mani. È una patria artificiale. A region is distinguished from the wild in that she is an immense deposit of hard work. So this is, makes complete sense, maybe sorry. A territory, I would say, is distinguished from the wild in that is an immense deposit of hard work. This land then is not the work of nature, it is the work of our hands. It is an artificial motherland. Più drastico e al limite blasfemo quello di Mendes la Rocha. Rocha's aphorism is more drastic than at the limits of blasphemy. La natura è una meta. Nature is a piece of shit. <laughs> Nei primi tempi dell'umanità, l'uomo, per conquistare il suo spazio vitale, ha dovuto iniziare una continua lotta per la trasformazione della natura in cultura per reagire al duplice aspetto di questo confronto. Se da una parte la natura gli fornisce tutti gli elementi indispensabili alla sua sopravvivenza, dall'altro lato essa gli si oppone con tutte le sue forze ostili. La città rappresenta oggi l'ultimo stadio di questo confronto, per cui essa può essere definita come la patria naturale del mondo. From the beginnings of mankind, in order to gain his living space, began a continuous struggle for the transformation of nature into culture, to respond to the dual aspect of this struggle. On one hand, nature provides all the elements necessary for man's survival. On the other, it opposes man with all its hostile force, strength, and power. Uh, the city today represents the last stage of the struggle, so it can be defined as the natural home of man. Thanks to human efforts, the city contains the fuoco of volcanoes, the sand of the desert, the jungle and the steppe, the flora and the fauna, Thanks to human efforts, the city holds the fire of volcanoes, the sands of the desert, the jungle and the steppe, the flora and the fauna, all of nature. Questa concezione dinamica del paesaggio si pone in antitesi con tutte le teorie fondate sull'adattamento e l'integrazione, teorie ancora molto diffuse nelle diverse commissioni di protezione dei siti dei monumenti storici come nelle pratiche della pianificazione urbanistica. Non si tratta quindi per l'architettura 
de integrar-se num sítio, mas de construir um novo sítio em um rapporto de confronto e não de sottomissione à existência. This dynamic conception of the landscape stands in contrast to all theories based on adaptation and integration. Theories which remain widely used in various committees for the protection of historical sites and monuments, as well as in urban planning. It is not about architecture integrating into a site, but building a new site in relation, in a relation of opposition, not a relation of submission to the existing. L'alpinista è felice e perché sa che al di là dell'orizzonte c'è la città. The mountaineer, the alpinist, is happy in the midst of the sea because he knows that the city lies beyond the horizon. Il marinaio è felice in mezzo al mare perché sa che al di là dell'orizzonte c'è la città. The sailor, the seaman, is happy in the midst of the sea because he knows that the city lies beyond the horizon. Quando noi parliamo di città, Pensiamo inevitabilmente alla città storica. Essa rappresenta ancora oggi l'avvenimento urbano più significativo. I due concetti, città storica e architettura moderna, sono indissociabilmente legati. Senza l'architettura moderna, la città storica perderebbe ogni significato. Essa partecipa attivamente al progetto della nuova città. La storia diventa così materia fondamentale per l'architettura. When we talk about cities, we inevitably think of the historic city. To this day, it represents the most significant urban event. The concept of the historic city and that of modern architecture are inextricably linked. Without modern architecture, the historic city would lose all meaning. In the meantime, it actively participates in the design of the new city. Niente è da inventare, tutto è da reinventare. Nothing is invented, everything has to be reinvented. Un altro riferimento importante per il progetto è il movimento moderno, nel quale si trovano accumulate molte esperienze, il cui tema principale è l'abitazione, ma riferirsi alla tradizione moderna implica in ogni caso il rifiuto del funzionalismo vulgare che allora si esprimeva con lo slogan forma e uguale funzione. Another important reference for design is the modern movement in which much experience is gathered, whose main theme is inhabitation. But referring to the modern tradition always implies the rejection of vulgar functionalism, which at the time was expressed with the slogan form equals function. L'acquedotto vive al momento che ha cessato di portare l'acqua. The aqueduct comes to life at the moment when it stops carrying water. Il progetto, strumento principale della disciplina, prima di essere strumento per la trasformazione della città, della realtà, è strumento per la sua conoscenza. Quindi una buona analisi è già progetto. Um, the architectural project the process of design is the main instrument of the discipline. Before being a tool for the transformation of reality, it is an instrument for its acknowledgement. Good analysis is already designed. Contro una visione consumistica del mondo, è necessario creare, cercare nuove soluzioni che possano riproporre in termini di architettura dei valori oggi alienati. Mi riferisco ai valori del suolo, come bene comune inalienabile, ai valori cosmici e geografici. Against the consumerist view of the world, it is necessary to find new solutions that may reproduce some lost values in architectural terms. I refer to the values of soil as an immutable common good, to cosmic values and geographic ones. Un vero prato arriva fino al centro della terra. Um, a true lawn or field reaches the center of the earth. A sinistra c'è scritto ieri, a destra oggi. The left is written yesterday, and oggi. to the right is today. Oggi. A sinistra ieri, a destra oggi. Yesterday and today. Eh, parlo di altri valori, per esempio i cambiamenti delle stagioni, all'alternanza del giorno e della notte, 
ai valori degli elementi primari per la sopravvivenza dell'uomo, come il sole, l'aria, la luce, l'acqua, i valori della storia e della memoria, i valori delle fatiche umane. I'm talking about the change in seasons, the rotation of day and night, the values of the primary elements for human survival, like the sun, air, light, water, the values of history and memory, the values of human labor. Quale dispendio di energie, quale sforzo per ventilare, riscaldare, illuminare, quando basta una finestra? Such expense of energy, such effort to ventilate, heat, light, all you need is a window. Ogni intervento presuppone una distruzione, distruggi con senno e con gioia. Every action requires destruction. Destroy wisely and with joy. Dopo queste mie brevi e sintetiche riflessioni, vorrei presentarvi alcuni dei miei ultimi progetti territoriali. Ciò che li accomuna è la ricerca di una concreta risposta ai tempi lunghi di evoluzione della città e al problema della diffusione incontrollata della città attuale, la cosiddetta città diffusa. Può ripetere l'ultimo pezzo? L'ultima frase. Sì. Non ce l'hai? No, perché? Ah, così c'è. Con l'ultimo progetto? Sì. and architecture, I want to um, illustrate these ideas with some of my projects. Can, can someone please allow me to five students in? I feel rather disappointed that they're not allowed to come in and listen to this lecture, please. You're allowed to 